Hello there, everyone. Welcome to your story hour. Uncle Dan and I are so glad you've joined us for today's story. It's fun to be with you once again. That's right, Aunt Carol. Getting together with all our friends is so much fun. And that includes all the boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunts. Well, as I guess you said at the very beginning, Uncle Dan, welcome to everyone. Say, Aunt Carol, I know that one of the things you love doing the most is telling great stories. Mm -hmm. What do you have for us today? Well, this story took place long ago in Russia. Okay. And it involves a grandmother and her three granddaughters. All right. And, well, it's a story that shows us what faith, even a child's faith, can accomplish. Oh, wow, that sounds really interesting. Let's get started right away. Consider it done, Uncle Dan. I call my story The, the Sharpened, Sharpened Knife. Knife. As our story opens, Grandmother Olga Petrosky and her three granddaughters, Sasha, Sonia, and Tatiana, are gathered around a crude table built from scraps of lumber which they've rescued from the ruins of their home. Well, children, I hope your tummies are full. I know we had only bread. And milk, Grandmother. Don't forget the milk. Oh, yes, yes, Sonia, the milk. Without that, we would all be hungry. How fortunate we are to be able to buy milk from Anatol. Somehow the soldiers miss two of his cows, or they would be dead too. Why did the soldiers kill all of the animals, Grandmother? Tatiana, dear, I suppose, I suppose it was to bring us to our knees. Without our animals, we have no way to farm, and without that, well, they hoped we would starve to death. Maybe Mama and Papa were lucky then. Sasha, what are you saying? How can they be lucky when they were killed so mercilessly? Without any heart, without... At least they did not suffer for months like we do. They died quickly. Oh, Grandmother. Oh, Sasha, Sasha, my love, come here. Come to your old grandmother. Come, my darlings, come, all of you. A grandmother's arms are long enough for three girls, my darling. Three darling girls. I miss them so much, Grandmother. Me too. Me too. I know. I miss them too. My beautiful son, Ilya, such a good, good man. And Mama. Yes, and your mother. A wonderful woman, a wonderful mother Elena was. Why did God let it happen, Grandmother? We weren't bothering anybody. We were helping people. We fed hungry people. Mama even bought winter coats for the servants and for their children. I know, I know. It's not fair. Sometimes, my love, life is not fair. But we must do the best we can. Sometimes this side of heaven, we will never know the answers to our biggest questions. But we can trust God always because he loves us and he hears us when we pray. Which reminds me... The knife. Oh, yes, the knife. Get it for me, Sasha, and we will sharpen it as we should. How can we do that, Grandmother? Isn't it already sharp enough? Yes, I suppose it is, but it is an old custom of our people. So what does it mean? Well, through many years, centuries, our countrymen have seen hard times, oppression, poverty... And in those times, even in the good times, we have followed this custom. At the end of every meal, we take the big knife and swipe it on the edge of the table like this to sharpen it. It's a prayer of faith that God will send food, that there will be bread and meat for the knife to carve for the next meal. And now we're in a hard time, aren't we, dear mother? Indeed we are, my darling Tatiana. Indeed we are. A few days later, after the noon meal. There we are. Once again, the knife is sharp enough for our supper. If we have one. Now, Sasha, we must not doubt. I remember when we had roast duck for supper. And beet soup and stewed cabbages. And blueberry tart. Oh, yes. And the picnics on the lawn with the tables groaning under the dishes and delicacies. And the big brass samovar brewing enough tea for the family and 20 guests at a time. It was all so delicious. Now all we have is bread. And more bread. And more bread! Oh, yes, yes, I know. And 
We have to work all day, all of us, to even earn enough for that, but at least we have food most of the time, and we have shelter. Yeah, a drafty old barn. Yeah, and the wind is blowing hard tonight, Grandmother. I'm cold. I'll tell you what. As soon as we can change into our night clothes, let's snuggle together in the hay. We'll pull hay over us all, and we'll spread the old quilt over that. We'll be as snug as a bug in a rug. And you'll tell us a story? And I'll tell you a story. Yay! Yay! Now, is everyone covered up? My toes are cold, Grandmother. All right. There now. I've piled them deep with the hay. Is that better? Uh Uh-huh. Don't forget your story, Grandmother. Oh, no, I haven't forgotten. What would you like to hear? I want to hear our story about how rich we used to be. Yeah, me too. I liked it when we were rich. Tell us about the good times so I can forget my aching muscles. (laughs) My poor darlings. But if we couldn't work all day long, we couldn't stand in line at night to buy our bread. Or buy our milk. Exactly. So I'm glad we have some way to survive. Barely. To be sure, Sasha, barely. Even little Tatiana here knits socks all day long to earn money. There aren't many six-year-olds who can knit as well as you, little one. (laughs) I'm very proud of you. Mama taught me. And taught you well. Now, where shall I begin? Begin when Papa built the big house. All right. Well, from the beginning, your Papa and your Mama, too, We're very wealthy. Grandfather and I inherited money from our parents. Your mama's parents were almost as rich as we, because your grandfather was a relative of the Tsar. We all had houses and barns, herds of animals, many servants and serfs, beautiful clothes, everything we could possibly want or need. But when you were born, Tatiana, your papa decided to build a brand new house. Elena, my dear, what do you think? Six or seven bedrooms, which shall it be? I vote for eight, my dear. (laughs) One for you and me, one for each of our three girls, and the rest for guest rooms. You never know when we may have several visitors at once. Yes, you're right. And then, of course, we'll have four more in the servants' wing. We'll have a separate shelter for the serfs, but... Warm and snug just the same. They're fortunate to have such a caring landlord, my dear. And we are blessed in so many ways. We must not forget that. And I am determined to do what we can to help others less fortunate. But all the same, it's wonderful to plan for this new house. Three stories, seven bedrooms, and... (laughs) (laughs) And big windows, my dear. In the nursery, in Tatiana's room, I want the windows to run from floor to ceiling to let in the morning light. Oh, yes, and I've planned a scenic view from the drawing room and dining rooms as well. We'll be able to see across the lawns, past the stables and barns, clear to the lake. It will be beautiful, Ilya. Our dream home. Yes, and if we want it completed in time, I have to have all of the supplies on hand as soon as the weather breaks. Which means... Which means that you must go into town today, am I right? Indeed you are, Elena. I'll call for Mikhail to prepare. Is there anything you need in town? I'll bring it with me when I return. No, except the lace samples for the curtains. Svetlana said she would choose some for me, so if you could go by her shop... Of course. You rang, sir? Yes, Mikhail. Will you let the livery boy know that I'll be needing the troika for a trip to town? Oh, yes, sir. I saw him polishing the runners just this morning. The sleigh should fly like the wind, sir, so do be careful. <laughs> Will do, Mikhail. Tell him to bring around the twin bays and that new black stallion. We'll see if they make a good team for the troika. Right away, sir. And let Eddie know so he'll be ready to drive. Right away. Oh, and sir. Yes? Shall I have Maria prepare tea before you go? Very good, Mikhail. Tea would prepare me for the ride to town. I love the cold, bright air, but sometimes it seems to seep through even the deepest furs. Excellent, sir. I'll I'll see to it. (laughs) 
The town's alive today, sir. The break in the weather has brought everyone in for supplies. So I see, Eddie. These three horses are the best in the stable, sir. We've covered more than ten miles in less than an hour. <laughs> yes. Julia <laughs> Podovkin! Good to see you, sir. And you, Andre. My best to Elena. Oh, and tell her that her gown for the ball is nearly finished. <laughs> Just send your message, boy, to the estate to let us know where. <laughs> yes, sir, certainly. <laughs> The architect is located just there on the corner, Eddie. Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa there! And chandeliers, Zora, two of them, matching ones for the hall. And maybe from Italy, sir, they're the finest? Yes, but can they be here on time? Yes, sir, if we send for them immediately. Well, then everything is set. Everything, sir. The builders assembling a crew of more than 50 carpenters and masons, so everything will be ready. Excellent, excellent. So, Grandmother, it was Mama who made my nursery so bright and pretty with the big windows? Yes, my darling, it was her wish. And your Papa made all of the arrangements. Oh, it was a beautiful house. It could be seen halfway to town. This was the most prosperous estate for many, many miles. And then the soldiers came. And burned it all to the ground. And killed Mama and Papa. And all the servants. Yes, my darlings, I know. Grandmother, do you think we'll last the winter? I pray to God that we do, Sonia. We must try, even though we're very tired, and even though we earn enough for only a few slices of bread. And milk. <laughs> yes, and a small jug of milk. We're all still alive, and we must try. Now, everyone, go to sleep. Tomorrow's another day. After work, Sasha, you and I will go to the ruins of the house in search of more things. Maybe under the burned rubble, we will find something we can sell to earn a few kopecks. Grandmother, look at this. I found a fork. The handle is partly melted from the fire, but we can still use it. Let me see. Oh, yes, yes, it's from your mother's silver set. It's something to remember her by. Oh, Grandmother, what's that? Where? There. Oh, oh yes, yes, I see it now. Uh, it, it looks like metal of some sort, but part of a charred wall has fallen on top of it. Help me, Sasha. Oh, oh. Help me move this. Uh, uh, just a little more. Oh, dear. Look! Oh, it's the samovar. Our samovar. Oh, grandmother. And our teapot. How wonderful. Oh, no. The samovar's all smashed in on one side. And the teapot. They're both ruined. Good. Good? Yes, good. If they weren't ruined, we'd have to sell them for the money we could get. But no one would buy either of them like they are, smashed and bent. So we shall take them to the barn. And we can at least have hot water. Yes, if there aren't any leaks. There's lots of charcoal and wood around for fuel, even if we don't have anything to make tea out of. Oh, how wonderful. Our own samovar back with us again. If only Ilya and Elena, too, were here to see this moment. It's nice, Grandmother. It looks pretty. I don't even care that it's dented. Well, if it hadn't been for Sasha's sharp eye, I would never have seen it. And now we can all have a sip or two of hot water to warm us before starting our day. When the weather breaks, we can dig beneath the snow along the riverbank and find some roots to brew for tea. Would you like that? It would taste so good. I remember how Mama loved to serve tea to all the important people who came to our house. After dinner, she would have all the saucers and cups. There you are, Alexi. A little tea to top off the meal. 
Ah. In our best china service, I might add. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. The dinner was delicious. Your cooks have outdone themselves. Ah, uh, I just love coming here when I get a chance. Your new house is a credit to your genius, Ilya. <laughs> Thank you, Alexei. <laughs> Thank you. But... On a more serious note, I just hope it's standing six months from now. Now, Ilya, I don't think civil war's on the horizon. Trust the words of Alexei Sokolov. You worry too much. Uh, Relax a little. Enjoy your home and this wonderful fire before us. All will be well. I hope you are right, Alexei. I truly do. And so, Elena, my dear, hand me the knife and I shall sharpen it as we... Always do. He's faithful, you know, Alexei. He never misses sharpening the knife. <laughs> the knife has never failed us. Oh, God has never failed us. Yes. We are all in God's hands. And now here we are, Grandmother, in the only building left on our estate, working as our serfs worked but without Papa's kind heart to help us. All that is true, Sasha, but we shall do as we have always done, and we shall trust God. Olga! Olga! I tell you, Igor, that woman moves more slowly every day. She's slow, it's true, Luda. But she's old, and she's all those children have. And when I, I Don't think be she... stupid, Igor. We've all had hard times. They're not the only ones to lose loved ones to enemy soldiers. Now, we ought to fire her and get someone younger. Besides, she can hardly carry the bales. Olga! I'm coming, Mrs. Popova. I'm coming. I don't believe these are any lighter today than they were yesterday. I'm sure, Olga. Nor will they be any lighter tomorrow. Now, Luda... I'm serious. Olga, I, I know you're tired, but, well... I just don't think we'll be needing you for the rest of the week. Uh, the mill will be shut down all next week, and I oh, just... Oh, please, Mrs. Popper. No, I'm sorry. We won't be needing you. Or Sasha. Or Sonia, either. That's just the way it is. Maybe next week. And maybe not. Anyway, here's your money for today. Hmm? Thank you. Yes. Well. You earned it, Olga. May God be with you and the children. Grandmother, have some hot water at least. You've hardly touched your bread. I'm just not hungry. You and Sonia, you too, Tatiana, you eat the rest of my piece. Oh, goody, I'm hungry. We didn't even have milk tonight. Tatiana! Oh, no, 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 it's all right. I want her to be happy for a little while tonight because tomorrow. We've each saved one piece of bread for the morning, Grandmother. Just like you said, one piece for tonight and one for breakfast. Oh, my girls. My dear, dear girls. Breakfast, yes. And then, then, then what shall we do? All that night, Grandmother Olga turned restlessly in the hay as her granddaughter slept by her side in the barn. She had always been a woman of faith, but she'd also always been a woman of wealth. And now her efforts to save her grandchildren from starvation seemed doomed to failure. Nevertheless, the next morning, by sheer effort of will, she tried to be brave and encouraging. All right, children, time to get up. Wake up, wake up, my darlings. But it's cold, Grandmother. And besides, we don't have to go anywhere. Did you forget? We're not working for Mrs. Popova today. Oh, no, I could never forget that. But today we will look for other jobs. We must believe that God will provide. Mm -hmm. My last bite. I know it's just bread, but I was so hungry that it tasted wonderful. All right. Now that we've all had our breakfast, let's make a plan. Tatjana? Yes, Grandmother? 
Today you are the only one of us with a job all ready to go. I'm depending on you to knit, knit, knit. I'll do my best, Grandmother. Oh, I'm sure you will. Sasha and Sonia, I want you two to go together and ask at every door in town if help is needed. Maybe someone needs help with a new baby, or maybe someone is sick. Or maybe someone needs a maid. That would be wonderful. And I will visit the neighboring farms. Anyway, we must try. Tonight, we'll come back and see what we found. What if no one needs help? What if we can't buy any bread? God will provide. But, Grandmother, you don't really believe he will. Of course I do. Uh-uh. Tatiana, don't say such a thing. Well, she doesn't. You should take that back. But it's true. If she really believed, she would have sharpened the knife after breakfast. She didn't sharpen the knife, so she doesn't really believe that God will send us food. Oh, no. She's right. Oh, oh my little Tatiana, you have found me out, and I was... <laughs> I was trying so hard not to show my discouragement. Grandmother, don't cry. Tatiana, look what you've done. No, no, no. It's all right, Sasha. She's right. I did not sharpen the knife. I just forgot because I... Tatiana? Yes, Grandmother? Hand me the knife. Here, Grandmother. Here is the knife. Now, little one, as I sharpen this knife, I want you to pray to God to send us food for today. Everyone bow your heads. Yes, Grandmother. Yes, yes grandmother. grandmother. Now, Tatiana, my dear, pray for us. Dear Father in Heaven, please help us today. We don't have any food, and we need some bread. So please, Father, send us bread. And not just a few slices, either but a whole big loaf. In Jesus' name, amen. Tatiana, a whole loaf. Never mind, Sasha. It was a good prayer, a very, very good prayer. That evening, as the family reassembled around the samovar in the barn, We don't have anything to eat. Yes, nobody earned any money today. Didn't God hear my prayer? God always hears our prayers, Tatiana. I'm not so sure he heard our prayer. Well, the day isn't over yet. That's right. We didn't pray for God to send us bread for supper. That's right. We just said we needed help today. I'll tell you what. Let's get all ready for bed and we'll snuggle in the hay. Maybe God will yet answer our prayers. And while we wait, you'll tell us another story? Exactly. And so that's the grand story of your mother's and father's wedding day. Was the reception really in the royal garden? Oh, yes, it was beautiful, so beautiful. And food and... Oh, oh my darlings, I'm so sorry. It's all right, Grandmother. Brr, it's so cold. The wind is vicious tonight. It's rattling these old barn doors. Whoa! Uh, hello, is anyone there? It's not the wind. Someone's knocking. Someone's here, Grandmother. You girls stay here. Hide yourselves in the hay. I'll go and see who it is. Remember now, not a sound. Hello? Hello? I'm coming. Just a minute. Who is it? Who's out there? Uh, it's me, Grandmother Olga. Alexei. Alexei Sokolov. Alexei Sokolov? Is it really? Yes, yes, really. May, may I come in? Yes, oh, yes, of course. Oh, pa pardon my manners. I'm just so surprised. <laughs> well, it's really me, but I'm just about frozen. Oh, but I, I mean, I'm sure you all know about being cold. Uh, your granddaughters are here with you, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes. Girls! Girls, come quickly. It's a friend. A dear, dear friend. I only wish I could have been here before. Prevented the destruction, uh, the death... Oh, uh, uh, please, please. There was nothing anyone could do. Oh. 
Here they come. Girls, you remember Papa and Mama's dearest friend, Alexei Sokolov? Oh, yes! Hello. Hello. And hello to you. Hello to all of you. So tell me, Alexei, what is... That the... brings me here on such a cold night? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting my manners again. Oh. Please bring your horses in out of the cold. Well, I have no horses. I walked. You walked? On a night like this? Well, actually, I left late this morning. I've been walking all day long to reach you, nearly 18 miles. What? Why? Well, that's a story in itself. You see, this morning, the strangest thing happened. I heard a voice speaking to me. A voice? Who was it? It was just a voice inside my head, but I heard it plainly. What did the voice say to you? Uh, another strange thing. It said, Go to Grandmother Olga and the children of your friends Ilya and Elena. It did? Yes, and I'll tell you. I thought I was going crazy, but the voice wouldn't let me alone. It started just after breakfast, over and over again. And by ten this morning, I finally said, All right, all right, I'll go. So here you are. So here I am. And you'll never guess what I brought for you. I know, I know. You know? But, but, but how could you know? Ah, you're teasing your old friend, yes? But I really, really know. Oh, Alexi, she just might know at that. But how? No, no, she could not know. At first, Grandmother forgot to sharpen the knife. The knife? Oh, 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 yes. But then she did sharpen it. And I prayed that God would send us a special gift. Uh, well, I don't know about that. What I have is not very expensive or special, but it is what the boys told me to bring. He's reaching inside his coat, Grandmother. Yes, and... And now he's pulling something out. A whole loaf of bread. Yay! Yay! Oh, my dear Alexi, you did bring us a loaf of bread. <laughs> a huge, wonderful, beautiful loaf of bread. The very thing we prayed for this morning. It is? Yes, I knew it. I knew God would send us bread. Ah. Now I know for sure that the voice I heard was the voice of God. And we know for sure that we should always bring our needs before God. And don't forget, Grandmother, we should always sharpen the knife. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We should never forget to sharpen the knife. It is a sign that we believe God in the marvelous goodness of God. That was a wonderful story, Aunt Carol. Tatiana really trusted her Heavenly Father. No wonder Jesus said we need to have the faith of a little child. You're right, Uncle Dan. It isn't all that unusual for children to lead the adults in trusting God. True. I remember hearing about a little girl who carried her umbrella to a special church meeting where the congregation was gathered to pray for rain. Many men and women smiled to see her with her umbrella, but she was the only one who didn't get drenched leaving the church after the meeting. I'm sure it brings a smile to God's face to see his little children trust him so. It gives him joy to honor that kind of faith. But Aunt Carol, we must remember that even though God hears every prayer, he doesn't always answer the way we want him to. He allows for free choice even when the choices bring pain. And sometimes that can be hard to understand. That's so, Uncle Dan. But what we can be sure of is that God is good. Jesus showed us that. And even though hurtful things often happen on earth, if we love and trust him, we can be certain of happiness throughout eternity. Amen. Goodbye for now. And remember, God loves you.